Good evening. It's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night, and we begin with Donald Trump's major claim that this election is rigged. The president taking aim at Trump because of those words. In Colorado, Trump repeating his claim today, members of his own party tonight saying that's just not true. Also this evening, People Magazine publishing a new article. They say they have colleagues supporting their reporter's story. She has accused Trump of sexual misconduct, and this photo taken with the reporter and the Trumps at Mar-a-Lago. ABC's Tom Yamas leading us off. Tonight, with just three weeks to go, Donald Trump hammering his message the election could be stolen. They have rigged it from the beginning. Rick, Spencer, if they even want to try and rig the election at the polling booths. But today, a stern rebuke from President Obama. You start whining before the game's even over? If, if whenever things are going badly for you and, and you lose, you start blaming somebody else? Then you don't have what it takes to be in this job. The president rejecting Trump's claims of widespread voter fraud. I'd invite Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. Backstage, before one of his rallies, I asked Trump for proof the election is rigged. What evidence do you have of voter fraud? You look at certain parts of the country and you see the kind of voter fraud you have. You see people that have been dead for 10 years and they're still so-called voting. Experts say that's just not true and that voter fraud is extremely rare. Florida Senator Marco Rubio dismissing Trump's claims as preposterous. We have 67 counties in the state, each of which conduct their own elections. I promise you there is not a 67 county conspiracy to rig this election. But Trump brushing off concerns from fellow Republicans, especially House Speaker Paul Ryan. Trump's crowd taking on the Speaker in his home state of Wisconsin. Do you think he wants you to win? Well, maybe not, because maybe he wants to run in four years, or maybe he doesn't know how to win. But Ryan, not the only Republican breaking with Trump, since at least nine women accused him of sexual misconduct. Melania Trump defending her husband. This was all organized from the opposition. Did they ever check the background of these women? Uh, they don't have any facts. But today, one of those women getting new support, seen in this photo standing next to Trump in 2005 at his Florida resort Mar-a-Lago. She was there to profile the Trumps, but says when Melania was out of the room, Trump shut the door behind us. Within seconds, he was pushing me against the wall and forcing his tongue down my throat. Trump denies it. Why wasn't it part of the story? Why didn't they make it part of the story? But today, People magazine published testimonials from five friends and colleagues who say she confided in them shortly after the alleged assault. She was very shaken up. She was scared. Um, she wanted to know what to do. She was scared of retaliation. Tom Yamas joined us live tonight from Colorado. And Tom, you just learned new details at this hour about Trump's strategy going into tomorrow night's debate. David, more psychological warfare, and this is truly incredible. Donald Trump at the last debate had invited President Bill Clinton's accusers, and tomorrow night, President Obama's half-brother Malik will be at the debate in the hall as a guest of Donald Trump. Now, Malik has clashed over his brother's policies as well as Hillary Clinton's, but he says tomorrow night he's there because he supports Donald Trump for president. David, Tom Yamas leading us off tonight. Tom, thanks as always. Hillary Clinton, meanwhile, deep in debate prep, her team convinced that the preparation has paid dividends in the first two debates. And tonight, WikiLeaks with a new batch of emails from inside the Clinton campaign and a list tonight. Hillary Clinton's other choices, her shortlist for VP. Here's ABC's Cecilia Vega. Hillary Clinton heading to Vegas to take on Donald Trump. Asked how debate prep is going. Clinton spending the last three days studying behind closed doors in this New York hotel as Trump mocks her disappearing act. She's resting for the debate. She's resting. Well, she rested for the last debate. She didn't do too well. In the past three months, Trump holding more than twice as many campaign events, 81 to her 32. But Clinton's team not apologizing, insisting those debate prep days pay off and the polls prove it. On that stage tomorrow, aides say she is prepared to address the slow drip of hacked WikiLeaks emails. Another batch from campaign chairman John Podesta out today, none independently verified by ABC News. One apparently sent by Podesta to Clinton, a list of 39 possible running mates. Their names organized, he writes, in rough food groups like Latinos, women, 
white men, African Americans, military leaders, also included business titans like Bill and Melinda Gates, Apple's Tim Cook, and Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz. And right there at the bottom of the list, all alone, Bernie Sanders. And Cecilia Vega with us live tonight as well. And Cecilia, you're also learning new details about Hillary Clinton's strategy going into this ever-important debate tomorrow night. David, she's been waiting to hit Donald Trump for his comments about that rigged election, also about the women who have come forward to accuse him of sexual misconduct. She is expected to do that directly for the very first time right here on the stage tomorrow, David. So she'll go there on both issues. Cecilia, our thanks to you. That final presidential debate tomorrow, full coverage right here. I'll be joining George and the entire powerhouse political team tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on ABC. In the meantime tonight, we go overseas now into the battle against ISIS in Iraq. U.S. forces right now backing up.